Greetings, I am the Game Dork. I'm here with my good friend DC from Loot and XP. Hello, hello. We are going to show you how to play Faye from Z-Man Games. Let's get started. In Faye, players represent different factions of fairy, trying to bring together druids from their factions to perform rituals that will give them more power than the other factions. But you want to keep your loyalty hidden so the other players can't work against you. You must be clever, cunning, strategic, and most of all, you must hide your intentions as you try to work out what the other players are trying to do. So for the components of the game, we got the game board here, various cards that will go into a little more detail, the druids that you'll be, and some scoring tokens. There are 60 druids, 12 each in 5 different colors. The cards include 12 ritual cards and 5 spirit cards. Distribute the druids across the board. Notice that the board is separated into 12 regions of 5 spaces each, bounded by rivers. These rivers only influence setup. They have no effect on the game itself. When placing the druids, you must ensure that there is one of each color in each region. It doesn't matter how they're distributed within the region as long as each region has all five colors. Place the five scoring tokens on the zero space of the scoring track along the edge of the board. Sort the ritual cards into piles. There are four cards marked with a one, three with a two, two each marked with a three and a four, and one card marked with a five. Shuffle the five spirit cards and deal one to each player. There will always be at least one card not given to a player. Discard all remaining cards without looking at them. Players look at their cards to see which faction they have received, being careful to keep their faction secret from the other players. You are now ready to play. The oldest player takes the first turn. A turn is simple. Just move all of the druids on any one space to an adjacent space. You don't have to move druids of your own color. You can move any color you like. Remember to move all of the druids on the space. However, you cannot move to an empty space. There must be at least one druid in the space to which you move. Remember that rivers have no effect on gameplay. You can move across them freely. Only lakes cannot be crossed. This means that eventually, you will end up with druids that cannot move because they are completely surrounded by empty spaces. This initiates a ritual. When any player initiates a ritual, all colors present in that ritual earn points. All colors present earn points regardless of how many druids of that color there are. A ritual is worth a number of points equal to the number of druids in that ritual. However, the terrain in which the ritual occurs can have an effect on the score. When a ritual occurs, look at the next ritual card. Each ritual card has two terrain types listed on it. The terrain in the top space is blessed, and the terrain on bottom is cursed. If a ritual occurs in the blessed terrain, that ritual is worth a number of bonus points as indicated on the card. However, if a ritual occurs in the cursed terrain, it is disrupted. All druids are removed from the game and no colors receive points. Regardless of the terrain or point value of the ritual, the player who initiated that ritual takes the ritual card, which will be worth one point at the end of the game. Play continues in this manner until the final ritual card has been claimed. There are a few more rules that we do need to cover. Once a space contains seven or more druids, you can no longer move those druids. 
you can still move druids into that space, but a group of seven or more druids is too large and unwieldy to move anymore, and must remain in the space where they are. Additionally, it is possible to initiate more than one ritual on a turn. When this happens, the player who initiated these rituals scores them in whatever order he wishes, and receives the ritual cards for all of them. Note that if all five colors are present in a ritual, they would all score the same number of points, which defeats the purpose. To counteract this, all the colors that have only one druid are removed. Colors that have more than one druid do not lose any. Then, score the ritual as normal. Finally, notice that the twelfth and final ritual card does not have a Cursed Terrain type. All terrain is considered blessed for this final ritual. No matter where the last ritual is formed, it will always be worth five bonus points. Once the last ritual has been scored, the game ends. On rare occasion, it may be that a player cannot take his turn because no moves are possible. In this case, the game ends immediately with no further rituals being scored. In either case, all players now reveal their spirit cards. Each player adds one point to their color score for each ritual card they possess. The player with the highest score is declared the winner. If there is a tie, the player with the fewest ritual cards wins. If there's still a tie, the players share the victory. So there you have it. How to play Fae. I really like the simplicity of the design, but how complex the strategies can be as you're trying to score the most points with your particular druid without giving away, you know, who you are too early in the game so everyone else can beat you to the punch. I've heard it described as an abstract strategy game, but I don't think that's really accurate. It's more of a hidden motive and social deduction game as you try to figure out what color the other players are having and try to keep your own color secret for as long as you can. Not too many games like that. Very thinky-thinky, but very quick and simple. My favorite kind of game. Same. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.